So me and my buddy Rob made a 5 a.m. run out to Navarre Beach to see what's happening in the break. Making the early morning run out to the beach is just an awesome experience. You get to watch the great sunrise as it comes over the horizon and uh, see the planet really come to life. So if you haven't tried a sunrise fishing experience, that's something you truly need to knock off your bucket list. As you can tell from the jacket, the temperature was abnormally cold for the month of May. I think it was like 65 degrees on this morning. <laughs> Get him, Rob. <laughs> there you go. He's loose. No more structure issues. Hopefully, don't cut you off. Got him now. You got him now. So Rob fought this fish for like 20 minutes and he kept getting hung up. So he just kept paddling around in circles until he got unhooked again and then the fight was back on. The funny thing about this was uh, we were actually trolling for kings with duster rigs and cigar minnows, but we had extra weight on the duster rig and we were trolling really deep and we kept hanging these snapper. And if you look in this picture, you'll actually see three more snap right below him following him up. <laughs> I'm trolling on a duster rig. That is a huge fish. Dude, one day too early, man. Secret spots, secret spots, people.
So if you're new to the sport of fishing beyond the breakers, fresh bait is a must. Uh, live hardtails with sabiki rigs is the way to go. Even with fresh bait, sometimes just dead cigar minnows outfishes everything. Um, on this day, uh, nothing was hitting live bait, but dead cigar minnows were the way to go. So I kept marking some fish on my fish finder in about 60 feet of water and I didn't bring anything to fish for snappers so I just said hey I'm just gonna throw a, a jig head down there with some Berkeley gulp shrimp and just bounce along the bottom and see what happens. Believe it or not those gulp shrimp were working pretty good for catching trigger fish and small snapper. Uh, they were hitting it as soon as it hit the bottom. So about 10 o'clock, these huge bait balls started blowing up all over the place. They were just getting schooled up by uh, Mahi Mahi, and uh, we were throwing frantically with gotcha lures, trying to just see what we could hook, but pretty much we had to sit back and just watch all of them go by.
So a lot of times when you hang these kings, uh, you really don't know how big they are because sometimes they hit it and run towards you or sideways or don't even realize they're hooked. And it takes them sometimes a minute before they really start kicking up their heels and spinning the reel. Kings are really known for their initial long runs. Uh, sometimes they'll just burn off, you know, 50 yards of line and just give up. And then sometimes they'll come right up to the boat and then see the boat and then burn off 50 yards of line. Sometimes you never know what they're going to do. A Hawaiian spear gaff is an awesome way to dispatch a king real fast. Uh, you don't want a big toothy animal coming in your kayak because when they come in, they come in hard and fast, thrashing around and breaking stuff. So sometimes just a quick little stick in the head by that spear gaff and the show's over and they're nice and quiet. hard to believe my eyes that I actually caught two hardtails on the same treble hook on the same bait. At about noon, the tide went straight slack, and the remora showed up. And if you know anything about remoras, all they do is just steal your bait. So I started running low on bait real quick, because as fast as I'd throw it out there, those remoras would just steal it. Yeah. 